Last video, we talked about AI and how AI is going to do nothing to the SMA world, even though everybody thinks the sky is falling, in my opinion. May change things a little bit, but if anything, I always think that when the changes happen, you know what ends up happening? The opportunities grow bigger and bigger. So today, or 20 minutes later, I think it was like two years ago, uh, you created a Upwork training for our audience, right? I think at that time, maybe we had like 5,500 members. Uh, it was one of the most popular trainings that we brought into LMV. And I would say it is probably one of the number one client getting actions that people take is creating their freelancer or Upwork. This is specifically Upwork. We've always had the freelancer one in there. Um, and so just that way of landing clients, right? So the biggest problem in the SMA world is people don't, I don't want to say don't know how, I just think that they just aren't willing to do what it takes to land clients. And I think the cool thing about Upwork is, is that you remove the uncomfortableness out of landing clients. What made you get into Upwork in the first place? I'm just curious because of that. Yeah. What's that? I feel like it's because of it's because of oh, that. Uh, and you and I have talked about this, right? I am terrible at sales. Um, <laughs> yeah. And there's that that whole I, th I think it's from Glenn Gary Glenn Ross or something. The whole sell me this pen thing. Yeah. And the way to do it is by talking about the outcome, by talking about all the benefits, right? How the prospect's life will change as a result of it. And I was always very very bad at doing that. Uh, so the great thing about Upwork is the conversation isn't about the outcome, isn't about the, 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 the benefits. The conversation is very much about the features, right? Yes. yes. Cause when I'm talking to someone from Upwork, I don't need to convince them that SEO is going to be good for their business. That SEO is going to be something they want to do. They already decided they want SEO and they've gone onto Upwork to post a job saying, hey, I need someone to help me with SEO. So then yeah. all we do is talk about SEO. And I can talk about SEO until, you know, my wife asks me to stop. Uh, she doesn't care. <laughs> she, she really doesn't. And that's okay. Uh, so, I mean, that conversation, the sales conversation, and, I, you know, in, inside the program, I don't even use that language because it's so different if you think about like a sales call, it's so different from that because we spend the whole time talking about here's our SEO process, here's what we do for SEO, you know, here's how we identify keywords, here's how we rank things higher. You know, there's no conversation that we have to have that is focused on the wonderful outcome they're going to have. Yep. So that's why that's what drew me to Upwork, honestly, was that realization that hey, this is a type of sales that's really answering strangers' questions about SEO. Right. I, I mean, SEO or whatever other services, you know, you're bidding on. Um, yes, yeah, absolutely. Like, like I do SEO, but like Upwork is huge for all forms of digital marketing. Like so, they, they run four or five billion dollars a year of jobs through their platform. And digital marketing is by far the largest category. Right. And rightfully so. And so... My, I think the the immediate question is uh, number one. I know you've done over two million dollars just on Upwork, um, bidding on jobs. And when did you start that? Four or five years ago? Oh, uh, I'd have to look. Probably 2017, 2018. Okay. So yeah, five six years. Five six years. And I know you run about two two million dollars through it. So and and by the way, the interesting thing is is that you know you people throw out numbers. Right. They throw out, you know, uh, you've done two million. They start calculating like, oh, you know, that's what, like four hundred thousand a year. And then what he's got expenses. And the reality is, is that outside of your. Your your links and your whatever it is that you're doing for SEO. Right. Everything else is profit, because I, I know that really, I think your father is really the only your father. And maybe a like you have a place to get links from and maybe citations for local but like expense wise, you really don't have many expenses. No, and even even links, uh, we don't do too many paid links anymore. anymore. Yeah, uh, I've been able to use my LinkedIn profile, and 
you know, I always joke that, you know, it doesn't really matter what school you went to because no one cares. Like right. five years out of college, no one cares what school you went to. Uh, the one exception to that apparently is LinkedIn because people on LinkedIn still do care for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, so I went I went to some fancy schools, uh, which is good because that allows me to use my LinkedIn profile to connect to blog owners, blog contributors. In the process, we do something called a content planner where we help people with the types of content that will rank on Google search. And one of the most common misunderstood myths about SEO, uh, external links, outbound links, uh, links to other relevant websites help you rank. They don't hurt you. So when we give content planners to the blog owners, blog contributors, we'll recommend websites that they should link to, relevant websites that they should link to, and, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, they know what we're doing. You know, we're not helping them out of the goodness of our heart. So we often, that's where we get a lot of our links, that type of uh, LinkedIn outreach. When I got into the SEO game in 2014, it was like, hey, this is the easiest way to explain SEO. Here is a bottle of water, right? When you send a link out, that's like putting a hole in your bottle and it's leaking the juice. When somebody leaks, uh, when somebody links to you, that's like adding the water into the bottle of water. So you want to make sure you have more incoming links, links than you do outgoing links. And I feel like that has kind of changed in some sense where it's more just about like, is this a real freaking thing? And does it know what it's talking about? And it should have inbound and outbound links to relevant articles, good websites. And if it does, we're going to rank you higher than somebody who's, you know, setting it to some blog network or you know, or has no outbound links. Exactly. So with the water, the only slight adjustment that I would say, water coming in is good. And when you link out, you are giving them water, but right. you're also holding on to your water. Right, right. right. You're not, you're the not link, leaking. Yeah, the link juice does not conserve mass in this case. You can give it away and keep it. Uh, you know, I think for, for a lot of beginners who are scared. I, I I don't want to use the word scared. I did a video this morning, actually, because I wanted to try out my new camera. As everybody can see, I'm not using the new one because it's this is very like this is very awful for me when it comes to videos and cameras and settings and apertures and all this stuff. But <laughs> I did a video this morning in regards to uh, what I believe is the number one reason why people can't not can't why the percentage of people who start, whether it doesn't have to be this business, it could be any business, right? Start and quote unquote fail. I don't think there's such thing as failing, right? You're either going to quit on yourself or you're going to succeed at it based on what success is to you. Um, and, and the number one reason is, and I believe will always be in any business in this world, is your ability to understand that you need to eat crow in the beginning. And, and what, what that means is if nobody's watched that video, maybe I'll post it up above if I've uploaded it at this point, is, uh, is if you're not willing to say, hey, I'll run your ads for free, okay? All I ask is for maybe a hundred bucks in ad spend, or I will pay for the ads. I will run it. And the, the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm new at this and I'm in the learning phase. Can you give me a shot? Right. And, and so people's inability to do that and come to terms and hoping that they're just going to hit a home run and think that like, that's going to work. And by the way, it happens every so often. Uh, that's uh, where I, attribute a lot of failures in business is because they're not willing to eat crow. I mean, if you look at like Stripe, right? And this is just, a, I just thought of this. So that's why I'm going to tell it. Like they used to literally walk business to business and like offer them like, uh, we'll come in, we'll set it up. We won't charge you anything for the first six months. We're going to boot, we're bootstrapping this. We're going to sleep on couches and blah, 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 whatever it is. I don't believe that every business requires to sleep on couches. I just believe that you you have to be willing to eat crow. And by the way, not for years, for like 30 days. I mean, th your, your life can change in 90 days. 
Uh, and if you're willing to do that in the beginning, then you can get your case studies. You, you could prove this business works or any business works. You could prove that it's profitable. You could prove blah, blah, blah. And you learn how to do it in the, in, in the meantime. And so what do people have to eat crow with, if that's even properly stated, uh, when it comes to Upwork? Yeah, uh, great point. And I completely agree. So the challenge with Upwork, and if anyone's tried this, they probably experienced it is it, it's hard to get clients to open your proposal. Upwork is a different platform than most other platforms of its style. Yeah. Imagine uh, an Uber, except you had 10 times as many riders as you had drivers, or uh, you had 10 times as many drivers as you, as you did riders. So you as a rider, you'd put in a, that you wanted to go Uber somewhere and 10 drivers will all show up. Obviously, Uber is the opposite of that, where there's more riders than drivers. But the way the Upwork platform is, there are more freelancers than there are clients. So the result of that, and look, no one, not a single person that I've ever spoken to is excited about posting a job on Upwork so they can sift through 50 proposals, do 25 interviews, you know, slowly and methodically review each and every applicant. That's not what happens. People go to Upwork because they have something that needs to get done and they want it to get done fairly quickly. So they post the job, okay? Upwork is a very, very fast moving platform. Something like 80 or 90% of the jobs that are filled on Upwork are filled within two business days of being posted. It's, in, it's very, very fast. So when I'll post a job on Upwork. I hire on Upwork quite a bit. I'll go post a job on Upwork. If it's something simple like graphic design, like, hey, I need some graphic design work. I'm probably going to get 70 proposals in the first two hours. I'm going to maybe open three of them. Yeah. And maybe I'm going to have a conversation with two people. And if one of those two people feels like they can do the job at a price I'm happy with, I'm going to click the hire button. I'm not interested in scouring 70 different resumes. That would take way, way too long. So the biggest challenge with Upwork, and it's good news, because if you're sending proposals on Upwork and you're not seeing a response... It's not that people are looking at your proposal and thinking, oh man, this proposal sucks. Almost guaranteed, you're not getting a response because they're not opening your proposal. So right. that first step, right? You have no reviews, you have no earnings, you have no anything on the platform. It's gonna be hard to, the first job is gonna be the hardest. And then the next one's a little bit easier, but still pretty hard. And by the time you get to five or six jobs, you're going to get a job success score and a badge, and then it's going to get a heck of a lot easier. But that first five, six jobs, your response rate, if your response rate is in the 5 to 10% range, so you send 100 proposals and you get five replies, okay? That's good. Uh, but once you get those first five or six jobs, man, your response rate, like my response rate right now, I don't apply to jobs as often as I do on Upwork because if I set and if I spent a few days applying to jobs on Upwork consistently, my whole week is going to be full of calls with clients. Yeah. Like my response rate is, you know, close to 50%. Like it's insane how quickly I can book myself with sales calls if I just go and send a few uh, proposals on Upwork. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's like a never ending tap of money. If I ever am twiddling my thumbs and, you know, feel like making some money, I can go send some quick copy paste proposals on Upwork and then, you know, land some new clients. I got there because I ate that crow. Um, and if you don't have any jobs on Upwork, you're going to have to do it too. Now, that being said, there are some tricks, some, some methods we can use to try to get those responses as quickly as possible with fewer proposals. A lot of freelancers on Upwork, man, if they hear that you got five responses from 100 proposals, they're like salivating, right? They can't believe you got that many responses. You know, they're, they're sending 500 proposals and getting one reply. Yep. Uh, because they're not focused on it correctly. You've got to, uh, I always recommend if you're getting started in Upwork as a freelancer, create a client account. You can have one account that does both freelancing and clients. Create a client account and post a job and just see what it looks like from the client's perspective. And remember, your goal isn't to get them to hire you. We gotta start small. Your first goal, when you set up your profile, when you send your proposals, 
is to get the client to stop scrolling and click on your proposal. Just like if you're running a Facebook ad, you've got to stop the scroll. So obviously profile, you you have a checklist, don't you? Of like setting up your, your Upwork profile and stuff like that. I do. So the first step for someone who's brand new and says, hey, I want to get jobs on Upwork. Yeah. Uh, we call it internally, we call it get the click, which basically means get your client, get the client to click on your profile. What so many people who get started in Upwork do is they spend you know, hours and hours writing this profile and uh, proofreading the profile and making sure the profile is perfect. And that's all a waste of time. Your, your profile is a waste of time. Uh, any client who's looking at your profile, man, they've, they've clicked on you already. Then they've done a few more clicks before they even get to the point of seeing your profile. Like the only people who are reading your profile on Upwork are, is probably your mom. <laughs> and that's about it. And she's already impressed with you, right? A really good profile is not going to make her more impressed. So a profile is such a waste of time on Upwork, okay? Do not spend a huge amount of time on your profile, okay? If you're, if you're, if you're spending too much time on your profile, you're doing it wrong. So there are four things. And if you create a job on Upwork and you scroll through the people who have proposed, you'll notice this. There are exactly four things that a client will see from you that you have to try to get them to stop clicking. Number one is your profile title. The profile is not important. The title is hugely important because they'll see the title of your profile when you apply to a job, okay? Number two is your profile image. And in fact, profile images are the only images that are on this page. Everything is like a really soft green color, some grays, and then there's the profile images. So a really fun, uh, a fun way that you can get more response is by making your profile image to like go into a graphic design. First, I mean, it should be teeth and face, look straight at the camera, big smile, Teeth and teeth and eyes. Uh, if you're if you wear glasses, take them off because it's, it's not as effective if you have glasses on. You got to let them see your eyes. Make sure it's well lit. You know you don't got to go crazy. You can go outside on a cloudy day and snap a quick shot. A plain background, nothing distracting. But then go into a graphic design tool, something like Canva, Canvas free, and just put a little uh, red circle uh, around the profile image. And that right there, because there's no red on the page, on the right. client facing page. Um, so put that little red circle, that'll get them to scroll down, they'll notice your image, and then they'll look at the rest of it. Just something simple like that. Okay, number number three, we call it the, uh, we call it the intro hook. The intro hook is the first 240 characters of your cover letter. It is not your profile. It's the first 240 characters of your cover letter that's shown as a preview, similar to an email preview or text message preview that you see on your phone. Okay. So you have 240 characters to get this client to want to read the rest, okay? And the most common thing that people start is, hi, first name, as a SEO expert, I can blah, 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 blah. That's the most boring thing imaginable. That's not gonna, that's not gonna pique their interest. That's not gonna get them to click. I mean, instead, use those 240 characters to get them to click to view the rest of your cover letter, to view the rest of what you sent over. Okay, and the last thing, the fourth thing, and so many people on Upwork screw this one up too. Upwork actually gives bad advice about this. Upwork has an article where they tell you what to do for your hourly rate. That's the fourth one, the hourly rate. Uh, yeah. And if you follow their advice, it's going to be terrible. Don't follow their advice. The problem is if you say I'm, I'm based in the United States or, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm an expert and I'm $5 an hour, I mean, no one is based in the United States who is an expert and is $5 an hour, okay? Like I can't hire someone to paint my living room for under 30 bucks an hour. So if you're claiming to be an expert, your hourly rate has got to Good confirm yeah. that you're an expert. So in the SEO space, your hourly rate's gotta be 70, 80, 90 bucks at least. Otherwise, any client will just keep going. They're like, man, 30 bucks. I don't wanna hire somebody who's only 30 bucks. That doesn't exactly. make any sense. What, what yeah. did you say was 240 characters? The preview, uh, the preview from your cover letter that's shown to clients when they're looking at proposals. We call it the intro hook, but that's what we named it internally. I have an okay. example here. Oh, yeah. are you? No, give me one, give me one second. How does this one sound? 
experienced digital marketer, adept, adept in driving online growth, proven expert expertise in SEO, social media, and content strategy, ready to deliver measurable results for your business. Let's connect and discuss your goals. I mean, I would say that's not awesome. Cool. No, that's why I did this. It's, it's me again, pointing that AI can't always help. Oh, ChatGPT wrote it for you. Yeah. Yeah. So what you want to do in that, so it's, it's probably the prompt. I bet if you gave ChatGPT a good prompt, it would give you something good. Um, so you want to talk about your client, you, the, your, your future prospective client who's reading this intro hook, they don't care about you. Right? They don't care even a little bit about you. So talk about them. Don't talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, don't waste character saying what your name is. Your name is obvious. Your name is visible. It's displayed. So you only have 240 characters. Don't, don't tell them what your name is. Uh, and talk about what their end goal is. Okay. And not what the goal they say in the proposal is, but what their end goal is. And you should right. know what their end goal is because if you're, you know, experienced in, in providing that service, you have some idea. So one of the better ones I've seen, uh, I posted a job because I needed someone to uh, do something with the Google Search Console API. Uh -huh. And uh, he wrote back and his intro hook was, you need to be able to quickly and accurately get the data you're after to make data-driven decisions and drive more organic traffic to your site. Leveraging our custom coding and knowledge of Google Search Console API, we do this by. Okay, That's 240 and characters? 240 characters. And like the cutoff at the word at the end of the word by, we do this by, cut off. That's yeah, obviously You want to know how. Now you want to know. Yeah. How. What the hell's coming up next? How do you do it? Click. Right. Yeah, so that's the first focus on Upwork is focus on getting the click, okay? So those four elements, focus on making those four elements perfect because if they don't click, nothing else matters. So my profile title, and again, my focus is on SEO, is SEO guru, I will get you ranked on Google. Um, so when I apply to a job, they see my face, they see SEO guru, I will get you ranked on Google. And then they're going to see my hourly rate, which is $150 an hour. And they're going to see the first 240 characters of my cover letter. And then now they'll also see like some badges that I have that I've earned right, through right. earnings, stuff like that. But you don't have control over those, right? Your goal is to get that first click, get the first client. So after you teach somebody those four very important points, now it's just a volume game and playing the 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 numbers. So sort of, I would say, because there's a sequence that it goes through, similar to, you know, I know you talk about go high level a lot and automations and things like that. So when you're using like a go high level automation, you're not necessarily trying to get someone to to buy something from you from an automation, right? You're trying to get them to the next step. Yeah. So here, the first step is to get them to try to click on your. Uh, to get them to click on your uh, cover letter, to click on your proposal. And then you're going to write your cover letter with goal number two in mind, okay? So we know, okay, if, they, if they're reading this cover letter, they've clicked on it, okay? So goal number one, check. Goal number two is to get them to reply. Goal yeah. number two is so that they reply to your cover letter because now you've started a conversation. And if you look at the client view of Upwork, when you log in as a client to jobs you've posted, once someone replies or once you as the client reply to someone, that person gets moved into the interviewing bucket. And that's what Upwork calls it. And much like how a casino is designed so to make it impossible to leave the casino, um, <laughs> once the interviewing process starts, they it's actually quite challenging for a client to go back and view more candidates. So your cover letter, the rest of the cover letter is based on getting the client to reply. And the best way to do that is to ask them simple questions. So we're gonna, we have the intro hook and then right below the intro hook, we're gonna have a couple of really simple questions for the client that they're gonna be really tempted to reply and answer those questions. And it's not gonna be like, what is your life's goal? That is not an easy question to answer. It's gonna be something like, what domain do you, are you focused on? Something, even if it was in the, I mean, okay, so if it was in the job posting, then you have to come up with a new question. You don't want to ask them questions that they've question. answered already, but that's it. So that goal, your goal there with the rest of your cover letter is to get them to reply. Once they reply, 
Okay, now you're sitting pretty good. Now you know that they're probably not going to go back and evaluate a bunch more people, but they might have replied to four or five, so you're still in competition. Uh, but once they reply, your goal changes again. Step three is to get them on the phone. And only when they've been on the phone do you actually want them to click hire. Don't try to get them to hire you based on your cover letter. Your goal in your cover letter is to get them to reply. And then once they reply, you start a conversation with them again. Your goal in that conversation is not for them to click the green hire button. Your goal in that conversation is to schedule a call, ideally as soon as possible. Because if you schedule the call for two days from now, it might be over. They've hired someone else by the time that call rolls around. Literally, it's happened to me where I've posted a job. I scheduled a time to talk with someone, was having a conversation with someone else, hopped on the phone, chatted with them, hired him, and then canceled my appointment. It was like, I already hired someone. Yeah. And so I love, uh, we always used to call it, um, you know, the low hanging fruit in this business is literally there. I mean, they're raising their hands in, 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 you know, what I, and by the way, outside of, you know, I know you, you've done millions of dollars on Upwork. I mean, I've seen just in our coaching program, you know, people have gone through the Upwork training. I mean, they have the amount, the, the, the case studies in money that I've seen people land with. What, what did we, uh, what does Jason call it in, under our prospect? I always forget computers reach. Um, right. And, you know, free, it was freelancer before. Up, I, th I feel like freelancer was bigger at some point. And then it was like guru became, or something. I don't remember. But either way, bottom line is, is that you want to start a business, go where they're raising their hands, eat crow for the first 30 days. I mean, listen, there's tips and tricks. Those four points are huge. I'll, I'll list them out and I'll post it in my free resources YouTube section. Uh, the steps of getting them to click responding, getting them on a call as soon as humanly possible would be probably the next big thing that they need to do. Uh, and then it's got to be numbers, right? You just got, you can't, like, what do you suggest? How many proposals a day do you suggest? Yeah, so uh, I used to say that you want to target five a day, but I don't anymore. Um, so what, what I say to do now, Upwork has an RSS feed, so get that feed set up. It will allow you to post, to apply to relevant jobs moments after they were posted. Literally, you'll get an email with a link to the job posting. You tap the email, you copy paste your proposal. You can do it from the Upwork iOS app, copy paste your proposal, hit send, and then go back to whatever you're doing. My family and I, we are in, we are visiting Rome and we're at the, is it the Parthenon that's in Rome? And something like, so we're at the Parthenon and the tour guide had to run off and use the restroom. So I pull up my phone. I had some emails from the RSS feed, applied to three jobs. One of them paid for the whole trip to Rome. Lovely. So it doesn't- This is a lovely business, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't take long to apply. Uh, get, your, get the feed set up. Make sure it's not sending you like 100 jobs a day because that's too many and you're gonna start to ignore the emails, but get it to send like some reasonable, like 10, 20, 30 jobs a day. And when you get that email, don't ignore it. Just take the minute or so that it's going to take to tap the link, paste your proposal, hit send, and then go back to whatever you were doing. Yeah. Now, I do. I forgot to mention, what are some of the biggest clients you've ever had that you got from Upwork? Black & Decker was one, right? Yeah, Stanley Black & Decker, uh, which is hilarious, right? They needed help with, they needed help with SEO. Yeah. Uh, so that was one. Got them. Uh, we got uh, Skillshare. Um, got Adobe. And as is, I was like, so for a lot of these big clients, for most of the big clients like this, you don't know who the client is until you hop on the phone. So I was uh, doing some stuff for, on video, and I was watching a YouTube uh, a YouTube uh, tutorial on using Adobe Premiere Pro, <laughs> and then I got off of that, hop on a call about SEO. And the guys were like, hey, we're from Adobe. And I was like, oh, I was just watching a video tutorial on how to use Premiere Pro. That is so funny. That's so yeah. crazy. And so like, like what, what was the, like, what was their budget for SEO on, uh, on this, for Stanley? Uh, so Stanley was in the low five figures. Uh, they needed to update a bunch of content and, and things like that. For a lot of these giant websites like this, you don't need a bunch of backlinks and whatnot, because the site is already crazy powerful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just you just content. need to, 
Yeah, I fixed all the content stuff. Uh, we had Skillshare. They were paying us lo-fi figures, but they were paying us that on a monthly basis. Uh, that was cool. Uh, so yeah, like a lot of these bigger ones are in the low-ish five figures. Now, and one that, way that- now, Is that a total used... job? Is that like total job five figures or you're talking about like monthly? Uh, monthly. Monthly, yeah. I think I remember you telling me what it, exactly what it was, but yeah. Um, yeah. How long did you have them for? Uh, so it depends on the different amounts for different ones. Like, so for these bigger clients, they're almost always- they have a set goal. Like they have a specific project that someone in the C-suite or lower has funded. So for Stanley, uh, it was just like, hey, we need to update this content on these products. So it was a very fixed scope of work to do. Uh, same for Skillshare. They said, hey, we have nine months. Here are the goals. Uh, here's our budget. Uh, it ended up being like over the nine months, it was in the six figures, which was fun. Um, so a lot of them have very, like, it's not like, it's not like a local HVAC guy who is two grand a month forever. Like they, yeah, yeah. very specific goals, very specific scope of work that they want done. Yeah. And budget. And they're not going to go over it. Yeah. Yeah. But always a good budget. It's, oh. it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, in, in one of the things that I have always loved, when it came to this business was this, and this is, I'm going to end with this, um, is that when you have the skills, the clients will come, right? You'll, you'll never be short of clients. Like you will never run out of money because you could just go on Upwork and put bids in and make yourself a hundred grand with a snap of a finger, right? I mean, it could be five clients or 10 clients, whatever it might be. You could write yourself a hundred thousand dollar check if you really wanted to. Okay. Um, yeah. It's like the digital. One of my agency. good friends, one of my good friends, he was struggling to land clients. So I was just like, hey, uh, come to Upwork. Uh, I'll help you one on one. I'll do everything with you and we'll make it happen. He founded a new business and the, the PL for his first 12 months was like $130,000. Yeah. It's awesome. It's amazing, actually. The opportunities are endless. I'm going to end it with this. I'll put some of the some Upwork secrets in the free resources. Uh, we'll see what Caleb is willing to do uh, and give me. And outside of that, anything you need or want or need to know, comment down below, subscribe, turn the notifications on. See you guys later on the next one.